Good morning. It's Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, When the Road to Peace is Stained with Blood, and our scripture is Psalm 120. I took my troubles to the Lord. I cried out to Him, and He answered my prayer. Rescue me, O Lord, from liars and from all deceitful people. O deceptive tongue, what will God do to you? How will He increase your punishment? You will be pierced with sharp arrows and burned with glowing coals. How I suffer in far-off Meshach. It pains me to live in distant Kadar. I'm tired of living among people who hate peace. I search for peace, but when I speak of peace, they want war. Peace is forever sought and elusive. The writer of today's psalm of ascents for those traveling back to Jerusalem's temple understand the anguish of one living far from home. And the distance was not in miles or travel days, but attitude. Home, as the poet has it, is where the heart is. And the heart of this writer longed for kindness and strength of trusted relationships. You can almost feel his bones creaking for the absence of peace. He brings forth his words from a tired heart that aches for the renewing of truth, an honest moment of unguarded rest. The sentence that stands alone in this psalm is, I searched for peace, but they wanted war. As the exhaustive climb to the apex of life's mountain of experiences comes to a close, this aging prophet looks back at life and the vanity of all else but peace. His standout takeaway line is anger. He craved a soft, refreshing water of calm truth to restore his dusty soul. What he got was a mirage of an amusement park's diversion, success offered on the backs of the poor and lonely. So-called peace was bought with bloodstains on every road. This psalm begins with assertion that God heard and answered his cry for rescue from the peace-barren, angry, foreign place. So, how is the prayer of the writer's troubles answered? Well, this is a good question, and one which the eons of humanity find sparse answer. That is, there's sparse answer without the leap of faith. There's a tendency towards thinking too much in the here and now as opposed to the eternal. Peace in this life at the address you call home is measured in fleeting moments of satisfaction with circumstances. The key word is fleeting. That word is key because the heart longs deeply for peace that's eternal, lasting. Considering the track record of humankind from the moment Eve took the first unsatisfactory bite of the fruit that separated her from God's loving embrace to the sharing of it with Adam and then passing it along to Cain and the rest of every breathing being, staining with curse every part of our existence right down to this present moment, we can have little hope in the maneuverings of human cleverness to somehow produce anything close to peace. Much more likely is the scenario of Russia invading Ukraine, and then America retaliating, followed by some sort of peace response of the United Nations, followed by decades of tension-filled negotiations, incidents, and exposed treachery on all sides. Man longs for peace, but it's an illusion, because the blood-stained road of war is more profitable. For you today, it's a short leap from the history books to despair. The one antidote for such misery is embracing it the way God did. He sent his only begotten, beloved son, Jesus, to deal with our problem. And in true fashion, we nailed the Prince of Peace to a tree on the town garbage dump. And that's when the olive branch of peace appeared in the wonder of an empty tomb. So go on in. You look around that empty tomb. You see the folded death shroud. You feel the empty space that death was supposed to inhabit. And know 
that peace lives forever in the beating, resurrected life of our Savior, and He wants you to have it. You only need drink deeply. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.